Hello and welcome to Chandler in Focus. I'm Council Member Sam Huang. Today we are going. To, today we are talking about water conservation and management. My guests today are Greg Caps, Water Resource Manager, and Casey Reimer, a conserv conservation coordinator for the city. Um, today we are going to have. Today we are going to share helpful tips for conserving water. Uh, before we begin, please share a little about yourself and your background, Casey. Sure, thank you for having us. Um, I'm an Arizona native, so I was born here and graduated from Arizona State University. And I've been in the water conservation for the last 14 years, 11 of those with Chandler. And I have a background in horticulture. I'm also a certified arborist and a certified landscape irrigation auditor. Very well. How about you, uh, Greg? Well, for, again, thank you for having us. I appreciate the opportunity to share our programs with you. Thank you. Um, again, my name is Greg Caps. I'm City's Water Resource Manager. I graduated from ASU as well. Go ASU. Oh, um, that's why we hired Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I graduated with an environmental resource management degree. I worked on water management programs in Colorado and Oregon before coming to Chandler with the Environmental Resource Conservation Service. I started with the city 18 years ago. Uh, my role here in Chandler is to ensure all of our residents have an adequate water supply now and into the future. And also those new residents that's yet to come and businesses, we also need to ensure they also have a supply as well. Thank you very much. So what uh, is water conservation and why is it important, Casey? Well, first of all, we live in a desert so water is very important to us. And, and water conservation is simply using water efficiently. And that way we have a reliable source for years to come. It also can help delay the cost of building new infrastructure in, in the water process. Okay, so can you share some water conservation tips uh, that our viewer can do at home? Of course, um, outdoors, it might surprise a lot of people that over 70% of the water that a single family household uses mm -hmm. goes outdoors yeah. to water the landscape, um, wash the car, you know, wash the dog. 70%. 70%, mm -hmm. yes. And usually about half of that uh, can be reduced or, or conserved. Mm -hmm. So we can help people save water, which of course, turns into saving money. Mm -hmm. And then indoors, there are um, uh, new water efficient household fixtures. Uh, dishwashers are more efficient. Uh, clothes washers are more efficient. And so those, as well as behaviors where people can wash full loads instead of half loads, um, those can all be ways to save water. So what are some of the most common leaks found around uh, a home or a business? The most common leaks, surprisingly, mm -hmm. are indoors with the toilet, the toilet flapper. Mm -hmm. The flapper over a number of years warps and it allows water to seep through the fixture mm -hmm. and the people don't hear it. And it can waste thousands of gallons of water a month. Mm -hmm. And it's a very easy and inexpensive uh, thing to fix, mm -hmm. just uh, replacing the flapper. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of ways and tips for folks to home to, to save water mm -hmm. in the home in the new home water guide, which okay. is also online. But they can request a copy from our office and, and we can provide that to them. Other things that are very common in single family homes are swimming pools. Mm -hmm. The fill valve malfunctions and keeps water, allowing water to fill the pool, but those have an overflow. And so the water, you, people don't see it and then mm -hmm. overflows and um, goes somewhere into the soil. And again, that's another one that can waste thousands of gallons of water. Uh, let's watch this short video showing how to locate simple leaks. Hi, my name is Dina Burns and I'm a City of Chandler Water Conservation. Have you ever received an unusually high water bill? If you have, I have some quick and easy tips to help you determine if you have a leak on your property. Before we start, we need to make sure that we have all the water off in the house and with your outdoor watering system. That means things like your laundry, your sprinkler system, showers, or your pool fill line. To begin, let's make sure you have these items on hand. 
a flashlight, screwdriver, and a wrench. So our first step is to check the meter. You'll do that by removing the meter box lid. And then you'll wanna open this cover to show your digital screen. What you're looking for is the big number is gonna be your read screen. That's indicating the number of gallons that have gone through the meter since it was set. And that's what we use to take the read. It'll flash over to the rate of flow screen. And that's gonna tell you if you have a leak, it's gonna tell you in gallons per minute what's going through that meter. Now, if, you, if it's showing zero, you'll wanna watch it for a couple flashes just to make sure that there's not a small leak present that doesn't show itself as a continuous flow. If you don't have a solar meter and it looks like this, you'll look at the low flow here to see if you have a leak present or water loss. Now, if there was flow at the meter, now we're gonna need to determine where that flow is coming from. You'll wanna start at your main water supply, which is generally at the front of your house, but you may have to walk around to find it. It looks very similar to this setup. So you'll start by shutting off your main water supply, like so, and then you'll return to the meter. If there's no flow on the meter, that's indicating that the leak is inside the house, or it could be in the irrigation system. If the meter still shows flow, that indicates there's a leak between the meter and the house. So if there's no flow, we'll wanna turn the main supply back on, and then we're going to shut off the supply to your irrigation system or your watering system, like so. And then we'll return to the meter. Now, if you still have flow, that indicates the problem's inside the house. If the flow is stopped, it means that this valve has now shut that flow off, so the problem is related to your watering system. So one of the most common leaks you'll find in your home relates to running toilets. Really easy check that you can do to make sure that you don't have that problem is to test your toilet out. You just remove the lid off the tank of your toilet and you'll get dye from your kitchen, just food coloring, really easy. You add a few drops to the tank of the toilet and then we'll wanna let that sit. We'll leave it alone for about 15 minutes or more um, just to make sure if everything's working right. If you have an inside leak and you have a pool, you'll also wanna check for that. As weird as it sounds, the water actually travels through your house to get to your pool. Additionally, you have water softener or if you have an RO system, you'll wanna check those things as well. Now that it's been 15 minutes, let's go back to our toilet check and see if we have any problems there. And it looks like we do have some blue coloration indicating that there is a problem in the toilet. Even the slightest tint of blue is gonna let you know that there is some seeping happening. And it's as easy as that. But if you were unable to locate your leak or need some additional help, feel free to contact us. You can find us by email at conserve at chandleraz.gov or online at chandleraz.gov slash water. Make sure to look for our Smart Home Water Guide, which will give you details on everything we covered today. The Smart Home Water Guide also has detailed information to help you with different plumbing arrangements or if your house has systems we didn't cover today, like a water softener or fountain. That video is very helpful. Um, so there are also ways to conserve water by install uh, the risk cap yard. Uh, can you tell us about the city's uh, residential landscape rebate program? Sure, we have um, three rebates. Mm -hmm. One is for installing Xeriscape, which is simply landscaping with low water use plants, installing Xeriscape at a new home. And that's a flat $200 rebate. We also have a rebate for removing grass and replacing it with Xeriscape. And that one can be up to $3,000, depending on how much grass is removed. The, um, the only thing, well, one of the um, things that they have to do is have, when they're finished with their conversion mm -hmm. is to have at least 50% low water use plants. Okay. So people can still have grass, they can still have a pool, mm -hmm. and still qualify for the conversion rebate. Okay. And then we also have a rebate for installing weather-based, or sometimes they call them smart irrigation controllers, mm -hmm. weather-based controllers on their home uh, for their irrigation lines. And that rebate is up to $250. Okay. And uh, we have some very um, uh, impressive results from our rebate, rebate program. Our conversion rebates 
saved um, over 2 million gallons last year. And the smart controller rebate saved, the residential rebate saved about 250,000 gallons. Our non-residential smart controller rebates uh, generally save about 21%. Mm -hmm. That's for homeowner associations, the big common areas and homeowner associations. So there's, um, there's a lot of water and money to be saved. Sure. So give us an example of uh, where design the risk cap system, uh, the risk cap yard. Um, I would say that it's um, interesting. It has a, a good design and sometimes people can contour their landscape to include a water retention area. So when it rains, they can capture some rainwater um, just in their landscape to help water their plants. But it doesn't have to be all cactus. It can mm -hmm. be colorful. Um, low water use, mm -hmm. flowering perennials, and we have a great resource for that too. Mm -hmm. This is the landscape plants for the Arizona desert, mm -hmm. and there's over 200 low water use plants mm -hmm. in here that people can choose from, and it includes trees and shrubs and, of course, cactus and flowering perennials. And this is also online, or you can request a, a hard mm -hmm. copy. Thank you. So, great. Uh, so. Can you describe a drought and how chandler could be affected? Well, a drought occurs when you have consecutive years of below average rainfall and snowfall. Mm -hmm. In Chandler and the other valley cities, the most important part of that is the snowfall because that's our wettest part of the year. And the snowfall, it falls in the mountains and it mm -hmm. melts and it runs into the rivers and then the reservoirs actually capture mm -hmm. the water from the rivers. Mm -hmm. And then that the reservoirs or the lakes store the water for us. So when we need the water to meet our demand, we call up the operating agency, which is Salt River Project or Central Arizona Project, and we order our water. Well, if the reservoirs slowly decline because there's not enough snowfall, mm -hmm. then there's gonna be a shortage. It's a surface water shortage. So when we order our full supply, they're only gonna give us a reduced amount. Um, and that just makes it more difficult for us to meet our demands during mm -hmm. those times. So how is Chandler prepared for drought? Chandler is in a really good position to handle the droughts. Mm -hmm. um, over the years, we've acquired a very diverse supply of water. We have we receive our water from Salton Verde, which is the Salton Verde watershed, which is the Arizona watershed. We also um, receive water from the Central Arizona Project, which is Colorado River water. And as you know, Colorado watershed is a huge res or a watershed that starts all the way up in Wyoming, uh, Colorado, Utah. Um, so if one of those uh, watersheds are in drought, such as the Colorado, if that's in drought and our local watershed is doing good, we'll just use more water from the local watershed and rely on that more. Mm -hmm. If, and vice versa, if the local watershed is in drought, um, we can rely on the Colorado River. Now, if both of them are shorted and there's a drought on both of the watersheds, we're blessed to have a very robust groundwater um, aquifer below mm -hmm. us. So then at that point, we could just withdraw the groundwater. Um, and the other thing that we've done over the years is we've invested in a very robust infrastructure system to where we have a water treatment plant off the CAP Canal, which mm -hmm. is all Colorado River. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a surface water treatment plant off of the Salt River Project Canal, which is Salt and Verde um, rivers. So then we have two treatment plants pulling off of two different supplies of water, which helps us in droughts as well. And we also have over 30 wells that we could pump mm. to withdraw the groundwater. It's important for us to manage the groundwater mm. because that is our safety valve and we yes. want to make sure there is water available for future generations yes. as well. Mm -hmm. So how do the water conservation tips, uh, Casey shared, help with managing the city's uh, water supply? But Kathy's the program she she implements is very important as well. It's a very critical component of our water resource management strategy because acquiring water is very, very expensive. Purchasing that water is very expensive and treating it and delivering it is expensive. So if we could reduce the demand with conservation programs, mm. that saves money um, for all of us and it helps keep our rates as low as we possibly can keep them. Mm -hmm. um, if you look back when our program started in 1992, uh, we had the average person used about 144 gallons per person per day. So based on your basic needs, everybody used on average 144 gallons a day. Well, today 
um, we use about 122 gallons per person per day. Mm -hmm. So that's a 22 gallon per person per day reduction. It doesn't mm -hmm. seem like a lot, mm -hmm. but if you multiply that by our population, mm -hmm. it's 5.5 million gallons per day mm -hmm. that we're using less based on our water using habits. So mm -hmm. that, that, again, helps keep the rates down and it helps conserve the supplies for mm -hmm. when we really need it. Just a note, Chandler have almost uh, 260,000 people. Yes. So uh, you may have already said this, but uh, would you uh, say it again, what is the importance of the city's drought management plan? Well, the drought management plan is a guidance document. So it helps guide us through all the different stages of a drought. And the stages are broken out based on how critical the surface water shortages will be for us. So the first stage that we have in our drought plan is when we predict a drought. So we work mm -hmm. real close with Salt River Project and Central Arizona Project to project when we're gonna have a shortage. And when we know that there's gonna be a shortage in the following year, we kick in stage one. And the stage one of our drought plan is messaging. So mm -hmm. we just put messages out of the media and, and social media to, to ask our residents to do what they can to conserve their water because there's eventually there's gonna be a surface water shortage. Um, stage two, the, the second stage of our drought is if our supplies are cut 10%. And when they're cut 10%, we then continue the messaging to keep that message going. And then we also mandate that we have water restrictions on our city facilities, um, our parks, our buildings, um, every, every city facility we have, um, we're going to mandate a reduction. And we did that so we could be the leader in that. We wanna make sure that we're the first to mandate reductions before we ask our citizens to do so. Um, so that's stage two. Stage three is when our Central Arizona project water is cut 15% and our Salt River project water is cut 25%. At that stage, we're gonna continue the messaging we're then going to also continue mandating water restrictions for um, our city facilities. And we're also gonna ask residents to start reducing water. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna provide recommendations on how they can do that. It'll be voluntary at that stage. And then the fourth stage occurs when it's gonna be very difficult for us to meet our demands with the supplies coming to us. And at that point, we would just have to mandate uh, water restrictions for all in Chandler. It looks like you answered my second question. I'll, I'll read a second question for you and see okay. if you, you have anything you want to add. Okay. So during drought conditions, what water reduction measures would take effect? Okay, that's a really good lead in actually, because mm -hmm. we have, um, when we do have reduction measures for all, um, mm -hmm. we would require, our goal is to always have enough water to meet basic water needs, not only for residents, but also our business community. So that's our main goal, to have basic water needs met. Mm -hmm. um, what we would do is focus on outdoor water use, because as Kathy said, 70% of the water is used outdoors. Mm -hmm. So we feel if we could reduce that um, supply, then we would um, really help put a dent in the surface water shortage we're receiving. So we would have things like restricting water use on, on specific days of the week, um, limiting the time of day that you'd be able to water your plants, um, we would also restrict overseeding and restrict water features. And we also have a little bit of flexibility built into where um, we would go to council through our ordinance and recommend additional, if we need those, mm -hmm. additional measures. But every shortage is different, so we would just have to um, come up with different measures to project to council. Okay. So, Casey, uh, would you describe some of the workshop and resources offered? Oh, of course. Um, mm -hmm. We have free workshops for adults in the spring and the fall, and we'll be starting um, this year. It will be starting in August. Got kind of an early start. It's not really mm -hmm. fall, but late summer maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we um, we have classes like um, removing uh, the grass in your yard. You know, how do you do that? Um, what does it look like when you're planning a landscape, mm -hmm. that kind of thing? We also have classes on irrigation, so drip irrigation, sprinkler irrigation, um, learning how to spot leaks and repair them mm -hmm. in your landscape. We have a class on that. Also, we have a whole class dedicated to smart irrigation controllers because that's kind of new to a lot of people. So this way they can learn about them and decide if it's something that they really need or 
maybe uh, it's not worth the investment for, mm -hmm. for a smart controller. We also have classes on uh, landscape maintenance mm -hmm. and uh, rainwater harvesting, so quite a variety. And mm -hmm. again, we usually have 10 to 11 classes each, se each season, so spring mm -hmm. and fall. Um, and then we also have programs for uh, youth, the students in Chandler. Mm -hmm. We offer water conservation programs for them. And in fact, last year we reached over 11,000 Chandler students, so we're real proud of that. Mm. We have a speakers bureau, so if someone needs uh, someone to come to their community mm -hmm. or or the civic group and speak to them on conservation, we're happy to do that. So those mm -hmm. are just some of the programs that we offer, and everything's well, free. Wonderful. So please take advantage of it. Okay. Um, what are some myths related related to water conservation? The myths. Mm -hmm. um, I think that. Some people think that because we live in a desert, we need to water more. Mm -hmm. And that's not always true. This is for landscapes. Mm -hmm. That's not always true. Our soils are basically clay and clay loam, and mm -hmm. they hold a lot of water. Mm -hmm. So if we water properly, we don't need to water as often. Mm -hmm. And we have a great resource for that, too. Mm -hmm. Did I mention this one before? I can't remember yeah. if I landscape uh, watering by the yeah. numbers. Yeah. Um, it has a page in here that shows people how much to water depending on the size of their plant. Mm -hmm. And in the very back, there's a schedule that shows them how often to water. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one of the big um, myths that people mm. think about living here is that they have to water a lot. Okay. Very nice. So can you also share some fun facts uh, to living a water-wise lifestyle? Um, I don't know how fun it is, yeah. but... <laughs> but I think if you save water, that mm. translates into saving money. That's okay. fun, right? Okay, that definitely is fun. Yeah, okay. so I think I think that's a, okay. a fun fact. Okay, um, so uh, I'll, this, I'll ask this question to both of you, but start with Casey first. So how can viewers find more information on this program and resources? We have a, a very um, robust website and the address is chandleraz.gov slash water. And they can find everything about our rebate programs. There's a whole section on landscape tips. So if they have questions with their landscape, they can check on that. And there's, uh, that's where they can find more information on our free classes. There's also a page that deals with water shortages and some of the myths associated with uh, drought and water shortages mm -hmm. and, and much, much more. Go ahead. I agree with Kathy. We have a great website um, that provides all sorts of information. If you want to view our drought plan, I would suggest going on our website because the drought plan is posted on there. And as Kathy mm -hmm. said, there's all sorts of um, information about our supplies and how our supplies will do during droughts. The other thing I would just caution is when you hear, you know, right now we're not going to hear a lot of projections that we're going to be in drought for the next few years at least. Um, but when you do hear, start hearing the media with uh, projections of drought. Keep in mind, all the cities are different. All the cities have different drought plans and water supplies. So I would just encourage people to go to our site and they can learn more about that. Okay. And we also have a Facebook page, mm -hmm. which is, if you go to Facebook, it's Chandler Conserves. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, some great information on that as well. Okay. In addition, the city of Chandler participates in Water Use It Wisely, which is an advertising campaign that kind of brings um, the, the message and messaging, the water conservation messaging to a number of cities in the valley. And that's why we have the little water drop here. This okay. is uh, well, Wayne Drop. Okay. And he's actually like a little bean bag. So mm -hmm. Wayne's gonna go and live with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> with only a few minutes left, is there anything else you would like to share? Go ahead. Um, again, I just hope that, that folks would go onto our website and learn more about our, mm -hmm. not only just our plans, our, our drought plans, but also our utilities and our well sites and our pipes and treatment plants. Um, we have a lot of good things going and mm -hmm. um, we have a safe, secure water supply that we could deliver to our customers. And you go on the website and learn all about that. Water quality as well, that's another important issue. Thank you both for being my guest today. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm Council Member Sam Huang, and see you next time in Chandler in Focus.